All right, welcome everybody and thank you for joining me uh, to talk a little bit about some proper ways to warm up and cool down uh, as it kind of relates to any type of exercise, whether it being indoor, outdoor, aerobic, anaerobic, we're gonna break it all down for you. So for those of you that don't know, I'm Zach Kerrigan. Uh, I am stationed at the, the Providence site. I'm a strength and conditioning specialist along with uh, a bachelor's degree in ex both exercise science and health promotion. So what we're gonna to do today is basically kind of break down what is a warm up, what is a cool down, why we do it, how we can do it, um, and you know, give you some examples of, of how to do it, so to say. Um, so first of all, we gotta break down some of the definitions very quickly just as to what, what is a warm up. A warm up is, is any type of activity or physical or mental even, especially when it relates to the cool downs once we get into that, that helps to prepare any individual for the demands of their chosen sport, exercise, any type of activity, any intensity, any duration, by increasing the just the basic core temperature of your body, increasing the blood flow, increasing the nutrient flow, um, and bring it to a specific area if it is more of a specific warm up, which you know we'll get into. So, you know, what we why why do we do a warm up? What's the what's the purpose? Now that we know what it is, uh, we we already discussed how discussed how it increases the body's temperature. It, it kind of loosens up the muscles and makes you more pliable. Not only the muscles, but the blood flow, the nutrient recruitment, uh, our tendons, our ligaments. It kind of gets everything prepared for that warm up. I always make this this comparison. Uh, especially living in New England, it, we all we all have cars, right? Um, and it gets very very cold here in the winter. So when it's two degrees outside, you don't wake up in the morning, turn on your co car, and then slam on the gas pedal and go. That's very stressful for your engine. Uh, your heat isn't actually warm yet; it's still cold. It's it's the same as your body. You want to treat your body the same way as you do your car. So you go you go out, you turn on your car. Uh, you just let it sit idle for a little bit, let it get warm, and then by the time you go back in, you get your coffee, you brush your teeth, then you go back out, and now your now your and your cold engine symbol is kind of turned off, and your car is finally actually starting to produce some warm air. That's kind of the same as your body, okay? So it, we also want to prepare it for the more strenuous activity that's about to happen. I know my personal drive or my workouts, you know, I'm just sitting on the couch with my coffee or my car is just sitting in a cold driveway. And then I'm going to get jump right into, you know, going on the highway and going 60, 70 miles an hour or with my workouts, I'm going to jump into doing some sprints, doing some heavy lifting. So you're preparing your body for that a lot more strenuous activity than it's previously been used to. Uh, it's huge, huge benefit of this is that it's going to reduce the risk of injury. Now, full disclaimer here, I'm not saying that if you warm up, you will never get injured, but it's going to significantly reduce, decrease increase the risk of that injury, okay? It, it increases both your heart rate, uh, the rate that you're breathing, the rate that you're sweating, uh, increase the blood flow that I've already mentioned a million times, um, which in turn is gonna increase the delivery of the oxygen and nutrients to those different working muscles. So I you know this is kind of science but you, you gotta know the background of why you do something before you do it, okay? So what are many benefits of warming up? Uh, increased movement or blood flow to those tissues uh, that's going to make those muscles more pliable. So bending, but not breaking, making you more resilient. Uh, it prepares your heart for an increase of activity, preparing for a, a very rapid increase in blood pressure and movement. Once again, I'm going to pound this through your, through your head today, reducing the risk of that injury. It's also going to reduce the injury or the, the muscle stiffness before your exercise bout. So say you did a very intense lower body exercise yesterday. You don't want to jump right into, into doing some heavy lower body lifts or jumping right into sprints, okay? You want to slowly get that blood flow, nu nutrient recruitment to those legs to help them recover. And that way you're going to perform at a higher level during this, this general exercise. And, and just overall, it's going to increase your metabolism. For those of you that are kind of unfamiliar with what that means, that basically means that we are going to make your body burn more calories, okay? Metabolic workout is something that is simply designed to make you burn more calories. So for those of you involved uh, looking for some fat loss, this is going to be a major benefit for you. So now kind of the juicy part, you know, how to effectively do this. So we break this apart into a few different subcategories here. So it's just a general warm up. Okay. So let me read through these and I'll give you, give you a more specific example. So a general warm up is about five minutes. It's a gradual increase, a speed walking, light jogging, biking, rowing, elliptical, basically anything that you see in the general cardio area of your gym. Then you go up into, uh, 
almost like a more specific warm up uh, uh, stretching. So dynamic and different static motions. So dynamic exercise or warm ups are more of a movement bet movement based stretching you're not bending over touching your toes and holding it for 30 seconds that's called a static stretch um, they can also be more specific to the specific type of exercise that you are doing quick example if you were doing a lower body day you're going to stretch your glutes your hamstrings and your quads right static stretching is where you you know bend over what everyone learned even myself being a you know, millennial even when i started playing soccer and uh, baseball, that's what we used to always do. All right, everyone get in a circle, bend over, touch your toes, hold it 30 seconds, everyone count it out loud, you clap, you move on to the next one, right? So that's been more, I'll get into this a little bit, but static stretching is a little bit more effective, we found through science recently, um, after your exercise, okay? And then for those of you that do maybe, um, and any sports that you still participate in is a exercise specific drill. So specific mobility drills that are gonna, uh, specifically relate to the exact motion that you're going to be partaking in. Okay. Um, so as I give a quick little example, if you're going to work on your shoulder strength that day, you need to warm up that rotator cuff. So you're going to work on some stability drills to activate that rotator cuff to get it to wake up and start working. Um, so a quick little um, breakdown of this. Um, majority of our clientele members come in, they do a group class. So if our group class starts at 10, uh, 12, 10, you want to come in at 12, jump on the treadmill for five minutes, just a gradual increase. It could be the rower, it could be the, the elliptical, whatever it is. And then you want to come over and do a, a dynamic stretch. So you know that we do full body exercise. So you're going to want to stretch probably those muscles that are pretty tight from sitting for most of the morning. So your hip flexors and your hamstrings, you're going to want to roll out your glutes, you know, your upper back from being in a rounded posture from sitting all day um, then you might want to do some more specific static stretches uh, or you can hold off this till after you work out and and then you get into this exercise specific drills um, which we want to try to keep it basic but as you can see they're just more specific drills that are specific to that movement that you're doing that day a total warm-up should take 10 to 15 minutes okay so the general warm-up about five minutes the warm-up dynamic stretching maybe another five Okay, maybe a little more depending on what you do. Maybe you have some foam rolling. And then if you do go into the exercise specific drills, then it's another five minutes. So you can see how you can range anywhere from the five to 10 minutes. So what's a cool down? Well, cool down is the exact opposite uh, of the warm up. So the warm up, you're climbing to the top of the mountain. The top of the mountain is your, is your exercise, your, your actual workout bound. And then your cool down is coming down the other side of that mountain. Uh, so it's easy exercise that will allow your body to gradually transition from an exertion state to a resting or near resting state. So trying to bring that heart rate back down, trying to send some signals to your to your brain to say, all right, we're done our workout. Um, let's get back to our daily activities, right? So what's the purpose of it? Well, it promotes recovery, returns the body to a pre-exercise or a pre-workout level or just a a a balanced level, so to say. Um, it helps with those exercise uh, with exercise soreness. So for those of you that aren't or maybe unknowingly are familiar with DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, this is typically when you get sore 24 to 40 hours after the workout, okay? It's delayed, met, delayed onset of the muscle soreness. Um, so if you do foam rolling proper cool down techniques, which we'll go over, it is going to decrease the effect of those DOMS, okay? Uh, helps all this by keeping the blood circulating. It's not a rapid shutdown. Okay, that we got to send some signals to your brain and say, all right, it's time to relax now, nice and slow cool down. Benefits of it, which I've already kind of briefly spoken of, is reducing the chance of dizziness or fainting caused by the pooling of your uh, venous blood that's at your extremities. It reduces the level of adrenaline in the blood, allows your heart rate to return to a more resting or, or balanced state, as we'd say. Uh, allow you to return to your work or daily activities without that crash feeling. If you work out at night, uh, then it allows your body to return to normal levels faster, giving you a better night's sleep. So real quick, I want to expand on that. If you work out, oops, sorry, if you work out in the morning, you may get that crash after you work out. If you get that crash, that's probably because you're not doing a proper cool down. You need to be able to do this, these, these uh, short five to 10 minute drills, breathing drills, foam rolling stretches, these actually send signals to your brain to come back down to normal, as we've spoken of. If you don't do that and you just do a rapid shutdown, you just end your workout very rapidly, get changed, you go back to work, your body, believe it or not, does not know that it's actually done that work. So once it finally, maybe an hour, hour and a half later, it's like, oh, hey, 
oh, oh, we're done our workout, huh? It'll just completely crash. And same kind of goes for the opposite. If you work out at night and you don't do a proper cool down, you end your workout at eight o'clock at night and you go to bed at nine or 10, your body's still like, oh, are we still working out? Are we still working out? It's still antsy, it's, it's restless, and you're not gonna ha- not be able to fall asleep or have a good night's sleep. So it's very, very important to do these cool downs. So how do we do it effectively? Um, so it's, it's, it's very simple, really. It, it's gentle exercising, such as just a light jog or walking. It's different breathing exercises. I swear by lying on my back, bending my knees and hips, and having my legs up on a bench, putting my hands right on my belly, and just breathing. Count your breaths, turn on some music, and just that sends these signals to your brain to, to slowly you know, end your workout. Different foam rolling techniques, which I've done a lot of talks on foam rolling, so if you want to get into that, um, you know, feel free to go watch those, or if you can't find them, let me know. Um, stretching on both the dynamic and static methods. Uh, I would definitely aim more towards the static stretches for your cool down. And then it, it, it's refuel. You know, you, you got to make sure that you, you have proper uh, carb and protein intake after you work out because that is your energy. And when you work out, you burn that energy. And you want to restore it that way you don't crash as well. Uh, this should once again take about five to ten minutes, just like the warm up did. All right, so I mean that's it. But let's kind of go over some brief little ones. So you're probably trying to think about in your head. You know, a lot of us haven't had exposure to these dynamic warm ups. Um, so this is a little picture I found of a bunch of different dynamic warm ups. As you can see, their movement, their 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 mobility drills. It's not just standing there bending over and touching your toes. Okay, and in a lot of these, you know, I'm not going to break them all down. Um, but I do a lot of these daily with my groups, with my personal training clients, um, and they all hit specific general areas or muscle groups. So if you're having, um, if you need some help to generate a proper warm up, let me know and we can kind of compile these into one that's going to be specific to what you're doing that day. Um, then the next one is, is more of your cool down. So you can see a little bit more static stretches. If you look at the far bottom right, you see that guy that's bending, uh, he's bending over, touching his toes, um, pulling the knee up into the chest, pulling the ankle back behind his bodies. Those are static stretches you're gonna hold for 30 seconds. Um, scientifically been proven to be a lot more effective after your workout. Kind of going back to one of the first things I talked about, if you don't wanna stretch or work cold muscles, just like you don't wanna stress or work you know, your cold engine of your car when you get going. And then up top is the foam rolling. So this person is foam rolling their, their T-spine, their thoracic spine, AKA their upper back. Uh, that's what rounds and gets very stiff and uh, is all about posture, especially when those shoulders get rounded when you sit and work at a computer all day. Um, so foam rolling is a great way uh, to cool down along with, you, can, you need to practice proper breathing patterns with, with the foam rolling and cooling down. So thank you so much for watching and learning a little bit. Uh, I really, really um, appreciate you trying to learn about warmups and cool downs. It's only gonna benefit you. You only get one body. You don't wanna be hurt. Um, That's why you have people like me, but at the same time, you wanna learn yourself uh, to understand what your body can and can't 